How are you all doing? Vertic Designs here, and for this Vegas Pro tutorial, I'll be showing you all how to edit videos in Vegas Pro 20. Now, the first thing that I always do every time I either upgrade or I get myself into Vegas Pro, I like to make sure that I have all the buttons available. So if you go underneath the video preview, go to the three dots, you can click on here and go down to edit visible buttons. This will then give you the option to be able to add yourself the go to start, go to end, previous frame, next frame, and also you can get yourself a loop playback. You want to go ahead and press OK, and there we go. We now have all the options available. And to import videos, it's really simple. All you need to do is go over to the Explorer. In here, locate where your file is or your folder, and then simply left click on here and drag this into the timeline. So for the example of this video, I'm going to left click on the audio, we're going to press U to separate this from the video layer. We're going to delete the original and we're going to replace it with the edited version and drag this underneath the video. Make sure it is correctly lined up to your video. And once it is, we can left click on the top one, hold shift, left click on the bottom one and you want to press G to group them back together. Now, the next important thing that we need to also consider and anytime that we import videos into Vegas Pro, it's important to go over to the project settings right near the top and just make sure that you have the correct width, the correct frame rate, and all of your settings have been applied. So for example, in this window, if you record your videos in 1080p, you would set the width to 1920 and the height by 1080. You can then change the frame rate. So let's say 25 FPS. You're just going to go over to the audio, make sure it's on 16 bit, best 48,000 stereo. And then going back to video, if you want to save this as a template, you can give it a name. So let's just call this 1080p. And then you can click on the save icon. You can also click on the button right near the bottom to start all of your projects with the settings. You can then click on apply, press OK, and there we go. Now that we've got ourselves the correct settings for the project, we can start to edit this video. So for example, if you wanted this audio to be more quiet, you can do it two ways. You can target a specific video or audio by going to the icon above here and dragging this down, and this will then apply onto your audio. However, you need to make sure you're only selecting your audio to only apply it to that specific track. If you wanted to make it louder, then you would go over to the video track or the audio track and then increase the volume. But if you wanted to, you can also do the same for this one as well. You can lower it to something like, let's say, minus infinite. So to trim a video down, all you need to do is look at the area that you don't want to include. So for example, I don't want this area right here all the way up to here. This is when I actually start the video. So I'm going to go to that specific location and then I'm going to press S on my keyboard to split it up. We're going to select the area that we don't need and press delete. And that will remove that section. From here, we can drag this back to the start and we can once again start to trim this even more. So for example, let's say that I also didn't want this section right here you can once again press S to split it up, go to the end of it and then press S again. And then you can left click on this one to select it and press delete. From here, once again, you can drag this back and connect it back to the first one. If yours doesn't connect for whatever reason, which it should do by default, you can always enable the magnet button at the bottom. What this will do is this one will allow to snap your clips together. So for example, now that we've got it turned off, if we were to drag this back in, it wouldn't snap onto the second clip. And speaking of this, you also have the crossfade. The crossfade button will allow you to automatically crossfade your clips once they start to touch each other. So for example, if you had this turned off and you try to crossfade them, it will just delete the first clip and play the second one. If we have this feature turned on, this will then allow us to crossfade this and make them blend together nicely going from one clip to the other. 
From here, you can also right click on the fade and change the crossfade to be linear where they both go in at the same time, or you can change it to one or the other. So if you needed one to fade out quicker, you can change it in here. And we can also talk about the auto ripple. Now the auto ripple is a really cool shortcut that helps you save time from having to constantly move the clips together. So for example, going back to splitting a video, if we were going to remove this awkward silence, we can press S, press S again, and this time we're going to enable this feature. And if we left click on the selected area and press delete, it will automatically connect it back up. You can also trim the videos down just by dragging the corners in, and this will also do the same thing and it will just trim them down now, the next thing is, let's say that you wanted to select all of your videos at the same time and you needed to move them to another location. You can do it two ways. You can either left click on the first clip and then hold shift and then left click on the last clip near the bottom and this will select all of your clips. Or you can do it the second way, which is to get yourself the selection tool right near the bottom, get yourself the selection tool, drag this out, select yourself the areas or the clips that you want to select and then go back to the first tool and we can move it from here. Now the next feature that we're going to talk about is the loop regions. Now loop regions have multi-purposes. For example, if you wanted to loop a specific area, you would left click on the empty area, drag this out and get yourself a selected area. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that you have your loop playback. And then with the loop playback, you would enable this. And every time that you play this back, it will now loop it forever until you turn it off. With a loop region, you can also turn this into a render preview or a RAM preview. If you hold Shift and B, this will do a RAM preview and it will give you a more accurate result on what it's going to look like. So for example, if you created yourself a transition and you needed to see what it's going to look like without it lagging, then you would do this and it will smoothly preview your video. Now the next feature that we're going to talk about is the fade in and fade out. You'll notice by now that we have the first one in the middle, which is the opacity. And we also have one on the edge, which will allow us to drag this in and create ourselves a fade in. And this will just then make the video go from zero all the way to something making it slowly become more visible. Same as last time, you can right click on here and change it to a different fade. So if you wanted just a plain fade from zero to 100, you can set it to this one and this will just play it from zero to 100. You can do this for audio layers as well. And this will just make it so that they don't all of a sudden appear and they're not very sharp. It will just slowly become more noticeable. Now that we've got ourselves the video, let's say we wanted to also get ourselves some background music. To add music in Vegas Pro, all you need to do is locate the area where your music is and then select yourself the song that you want to use and then just simply drag this into the layer below. From here, we can lower the opacity to something much lower, for example, something like 32 minus 32 and then we're going to drag this to fade it in. We can right click on here, set it to a normal fade and then we're also going to fade this out. Editing this a little bit more, let's say that we also wanted to add ourselves a picture. We would go back to the explorer, we would go back into the folder and sometimes if you don't see your specific image or item that you've imported into here, you just need to click on the refresh icon and this will make it visible. So for example, let's say that I wanted to get the Vegas Pro logo, we would drag this above the video layer and this will create a new video track. With this new video track, we're going to talk about the vent pan slash crop. So if you scroll up to zoom in, you'll notice that there is a crop icon right here. If you left click on the crop icon, this will bring you to this window right here. And this is where you can do all of your repositioning. You can change the scale of items such as videos, pictures, text, and just about any item that you throw into Vegas Pro. So for example, if we wanted this logo, 
to become visible and we wanted it to go from being really big to being really small. We can get ourselves the first keyframe. We can left click further out and then hold shift, drag this out and this will change the scale of this logo. You also need to make sure that you have the sync cursor because this will sync your video preview with this panel right here. And as you can see, we have now created a simple animation where it goes from big to small or average. What we can do from here is we can close this down and we can give it a fade in. We can have a look, see what this looks like. And at the moment it is really slow. We can edit this by going back into here. And if you drag this further in, it will make it play a lot quicker. In addition to this, you can also right click on here and set it to a linear, fast, slow, smooth, or different type of keyframe, depending on your preference. And from here, you can drag this in to make it shorter, make it have a fade out. And now this will appear on the screen. It will be visible and then it will fade out. You can also go back into here and if you wanted to reset it back to default you can left click on here and just set it back to default and this will probably back to its normal size same goes for if you didn't want this to be animated and you only wanted to change its position you can then delete the other keyframe for example this one and it will only stay at that specific size the next thing that we're going to talk about is the video effects so let's say that we wanted to get ourselves a video effect onto here. We can go to the video tab or the video effects and browse through all the different effects. And let's say we wanted to get ourselves a brightness and contrast. We can left click in here and select yourself either a template or just start yourself a fresh new one by selecting the default template. In here, we can start to apply the brightness. We can change the contrast and this will apply it onto the video. Let's say we wanted to also apply ourselves another effect. We can close this down, get ourselves, let's say a border, apply it onto the video, and this will then create a video keychain or a video effects chain. You can enable the effect by hiding it or bringing it back. And you can also change the order in which the effects will apply. So for example, the border will be better to be in front of the video effect. That way it's not going to be affected by the brightness and contrast. In addition to this, you can also close them down by pressing the close effects button right here or remove the video effect. Same goes for this one as well. The other way to do this or the other way to apply a video effect is to go to the three dots on the video track, go to more, and then go down to edit visible buttons. In here, you want to get yourself the composition in mode, press okay, and this will allow you to have all of your video layer effects. For example, add, subtract, screen, and much more. So let's say, for example, we wanted to get ourselves a video overlay that is going to be played on top of this clip right here. We can get ourselves a film burn above the video, and we can create ourselves a new track. From here, we can go to the mode and we can set this one to either screen or add, and this will apply it onto the video. As you can see, we can change it to screen or add or even overlay if you wanted to. But most of the time, add will be the best option. So from here, we're going to make this fade in and also fade out as well. And we're going to make it so that the film burn is right in the middle of the screen as soon as it's going to transition from one area to another. And if we have a look at this, you can see it will start to appear on the screen and then it will transition onto the next clip. If you struggle to preview the video effect or if your Vegas Pro is struggling to preview your clips, you can go up to the video preview and then left click on here and this will allow you to lower the quality to something much worse, which will make it play back a lot more smoother. And this is honestly great, especially if you're working with lots of effects or transitions. And speaking of transitions, 
let's say that we also wanted to add ourselves a transition from this clip onto the next one. You want to go over to the transition tab. In here, select yourself any transition that you want. So personally, I like the zoom, I like the RGB split and some other ones such as roll. Let's say we're going to get ourselves the RGB split. We would drag this and apply it in between the two clips. And as you can see, this will transition from one clip onto the next. You will also have the options at the top to customize it if you wanted to change the settings, or you can also save the preset and apply it onto the next time that you create that transition. As you can see at the moment, both of these clips have been crossfaded into each other. And if you wanted to edit the duration, you would drag this in and then drag this one in as well. And this will make it shorter. Instead of it being that long, we can set it to something like 12 and this will make it a lot quicker. Now, in addition to this, you can also apply a transition without having to create it like this. So for example, if you have both of your clips and then you crossfaded them into each other, you can then also have a crossfade on your audio as well. And then from here, you would apply the effect onto the video and this will make it crossfade with the video as well. So we can change it for the audio and leave it on the normal linear fade. We're going to close this down and we're going to zoom back out and have a look at this video. As you can see, we have this area right here, which is not touching. So we need to, once again, left click on the top one, hold shift, click on the bottom one, and we're going to connect this back up. Above the video, you will also have some other useful features such as the video quality, which we've talked about. You will have the full screen mode, which will allow you to put this on full screen. You will also have the video effects, the split screen, which will allow you to preview the before and after applying a video effect. And you also have the grid, which you can turn on a save grid or a normal grid. And then finally, the save to snapshot. So let's say, for example, you needed to get yourself a thumbnail, you can left click on here and you can save your frame as a PNG file. Once you're happy with your project and you're ready to save this, we're going to go up to file, go down to save as, and we're going to give this a name. So let's say something like example or anything that you want. Press save. And then finally, once you're ready to save this and render your video, you can go to render as at the top. Wait for this to load. And then you want to select yourself a video format such as Magic's AVC. You can then select yourself the most appropriate template that is close enough to your project. So for example, for me, it is the Ultra HD 4K or 2160, as you can see, and then we can click on customize template. Once this window pops up, you want to make sure that you have the correct video size, set the profile to something like high, change it to 25 FPS. You want to enable the deblocking filter. This will stop large pixelation. And then you want to select yourself the correct video bitrate. If you're not sure about bitrate, I'll put a link in the description down below, which will show you the recommended bitrate for YouTube. And for this specific video, it's going to be 66 for the average, and then it's going to be 85 for the maximum. So we're going to set it in here, and then we're going to also go over to the audio, set it to 384 for the audio, go back to video, and we're going to save this as 4K HD, and we can click on the save icon right here. Once you're happy with your template, you want to save it, go ahead and click on OK. We're going to click on the star to save its favorites. We're going to select the template that we've just created, give yourself a specific location, and we're just going to call this a simple test video. And then you just want to go to render as, and this will render your video, putting it all together. 
I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.